All right, so welcome back here to the Winter Fancy Food Show. We continue our coverage, and of course, we love to talk about technology. I've got Megan Mokri of Byte. So great to have you. Excited to be here. Yeah, so Byte for retail work, retail, I should say retail technology for the workplace. Yes. Kind of a little bit of a different uh, focus on where technology is going in food service. Yes. Uh, and in food in general. Yes. Tell us what Byte does. So we enable food companies of any size to sell their products anytime, anywhere, through unattended stores. And these unattended stores are very small footprint in nature. Right. And so they're meant to be embedded where consumers are spending time away from home, at work, in universities, hospitals, hotels, airports, you name it. Yeah. So Megan, when you, you look at different manuf or, or different food suppliers, whether it's a specialty food company that's selling a snack, yeah. or maybe it's a fresh salad company, somebody that yeah. like a retail food service operation, would they also be applicable to this? Absolutely. So they could give you prepackaged goods into the retail system and it would go into your somewhat of a kiosk. Yeah, so we there's there's three different customer sets that we typically work with. Okay. Um, there's the usual suspects, so vending operators. Right. There's food service companies. But the fastest growing segment is what we call retail. So whether it be your traditional brick and mortar restaurant that has a grab and go line yeah. or a e commerce playing that's e commerce player that's doing direct to consumer you know subscription delivery. Um, and grocery is also a, a pretty quickly growing segment for us as well. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of flipping this model on its head of let's rethink retail and how you can actually embed your products where consumers are already spending time. Is most of the interactions with customers enabled via an app of some sort uh, or is it done right there at the unit? It's right there at the unit. Um, so you walk up, you put a credit card in it. Exactly. And you're off and running. Do you have plans for app enabled? Yes, we've, we've uh, betaed an app. Um, to date, we've really focused on the most frictionless user experience possible. Right. So we've got uh, almost a thousand locations across the U.S. at this point. So That's great. serving a wide variety of demographics. What's the footprint of one of these things? Oh gosh, it's this big by this big. What two feet by two feet? So how Very much small. inventory can it hold? Uh, it depends what you're, is being sold. So the shelving is very flexible. So you could put a whole row of drinks. That's going to hold a lot higher quantity of okay. products. Or if you're doing, you know, salads and sandwiches and whatnot. Um, if for the client that's taking a, a well-rounded approach of snacks, drinks, salads, wraps, sandwiches. Right. It's going to hold a, about 100 units of inventory uh, if it's fully packed. Yeah. So with fresh food, because you guys are taking kind of a new approach here, mm -hmm. uh, with fresh products, how do you deal with maintaining that freshness in a almost a kiosk environment? Yeah. What's the process there? How do you guys go about it? That's why the data is critical. So. Historically, vending's not known for fresh product, right? right? Um, because uh, intentionally so, that's that's the product that typically eliminates their profit margins. Um, the uh, Bytes, Bytes platform provides the data that you need in order yep. to actually f sell fresh, perishable products. So you're getting so you feedback know, from the machine all the time? You're getting feedback from, our clients get real-time inventory of what's in stock. They see what's selling. They see when their delivery drivers go out there, what's actually being removed. They can get the level of detail of knowing how long, you know, this specific salad sat in this specific fridge, um, which that data can be used to uh, not only proactively adjust the assortment on a move forward basis, but I'll give you an example. It would just had Martin Luther King weekend, right? Three day weekend. A lot of offices are closed. Right. And uh, on a Friday afternoon, our clients can go in and see what inventory is likely to spoil, and they can proactively set a happy hour up okay. to clear through that inventory. Yeah, yeah. So if I were running it mm -hmm. as a you know a, a retailer, and uh, maybe I've got a third party helping to provide product for it, whatever it might be, I'm getting that data. And let's say that one of those items does go into you know the category of you know no longer sale date. Yep. Can I shut that machine down? Yeah, absolutely. So I can terminate, I can tell the machine, say, okay, there's four salads in there, but they're yeah. both past their date, yep. all, or all of them are past their date, shut down retail options, even though it's sitting there right there looking as yeah. though it's sold. How would the customer get that feedback from the machine? So they can, it's called a remote lockdown. They can lock down the fridge and then display a message to the consumer that, um, you Product's know, not available. Right, yeah. exactly. Okay. All right. It's, it's argued That's from good a food, for food, food safety, safety yeah. standpoint. Yeah. Uh, it's a, 
it's pretty powerful because let's say there's a recall, you can go into our dashboard and see in real time, okay, this product that was just recalled is in these 10 stores. I'm yeah. gonna lock all of those down. Yeah, so are you guys regulated like restaurants are? where they have to go through food safety requirements and levels of uh, certification and then also inspections. So we, How does that work for you? Uh, we as a platform are not. We work uh, pretty closely with NAMA, which is the National Automated Merchandising Association, basically the vending industry group. Yeah, but they've um, never seen anybody like industry you. Group. They haven't. Well, they, they've worked pretty closely with uh, both state and federal government in terms of helping craft guidelines for newer technologies yeah. like these. So uh, working very closely with them uh, in terms of automating lockdown or when went out of temperature, but to answer your question about uh, how it's how it's seen from a, a health perspective, it depends. <laughs> it's county by county, okay, which which is challenging. Uh, but uh, with a thousand units out there, we're operating in most major metros at this point. Well, like on a restaurant, you, you know, the health inspector comes by and, yeah. and he checks you out, and gives yeah. you a rating, and yeah. you're off and running, no yeah. big deal. Yeah. Would they not do that with your machine? Uh, they'll visit machines. Typically, what they'll look at, they'll look for temperature, they'll look for clean, cleanliness, yeah. and just basic. Is it operational? Yeah. You know, all the things that are there, all the yeah. it, the, the normal stuff yeah. you would think. So, Megan, let's talk about AI because yeah. uh, we we've seen uh, AI in both food service, how consumers are interfacing with restaurant brands, food brands yeah. in general, even manufacturers here. How do you guys see AI impacting food service as a whole or the food industry? Yeah, um, I can speak to ourselves. AI certainly has applicability here, just given the, the breadth of data that we're collecting on a, on a real-time basis. Um, layering AI in a, in a way that makes that data actionable is really where our mind is going. Right. So for the, the companies that we work with, they're, for the most part, creating an entirely new distribution channel for their products. You know, you hear a lot about omni-channel. This is another channel right. that, that folds into that strategy. And so how do you surface actionable insights in terms of stocking levels, in terms of the, of the breadth of products that are, that are in stock in a hospital versus a workplace? So AI can play a role in For taking sure. that data and making it actionable and making our clients more successful. That's going to be kind of that first layer. I know there's levels of, of artificial intelligence out there you know, when you get to fully autonomous and those kind of things. Yeah. Uh, but in the basis of I information, especially around data, I think mm -hmm. now you're, it's almost like machine learning in essence, yeah. where you're figuring out things that are happening based on patterns and exactly. that's definitely going to be helping, especially in places like you. Let's talk, uh, our last question is about trends mm -hmm. and that being consumer trends. Obviously you're dealing with, you know, kind of these forward thinkers most of the time. They're thinking how to retail product differently. What are you seeing in yeah. trends uh, around food today? Speaking of the consumer, I, I mean, so I, uh, six years ago, founded a, a meal delivery company. And okay. that's really when we saw this consumer shift for convenient, fresh, right. health conscious. And that has driven just massive shifts. You look at the wave of meal kits, you look oh, at yeah. the wave of third party delivery platforms. 60% of West restaurant orders are now consumed off premise. Right. And then, um, and then you also have workplaces understanding the impact of quality food on yep. the health of their workforce and For the culture sure. of their workforce. And so we're kind of, um, those two trends are, we're really the impetus behind, okay, if consumers want fresh quality food and they want it conveniently, how do we actually deliver that where they're already spending time? Yeah. And so, hence the unattended re retail concept. Oh, and by the way, workplaces actually have a need as well. I like it. So it hits on a number of, of, kind of trends. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of movement in, obviously, the health and wellness category, which is, yeah. I think, is only going to help with, uh, especially in categories like specialty food, where we've seen so much here at this show yeah. uh, around that. So yeah. that's great that you guys are all over this. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Megan, it's been great having you. Thanks for stopping in on the show Thank today. Thank you for having me. All right. Okay, make sure and stay tuned right here for more coverage from the Winter Fancy Food Show. We'll catch you soon.